Man, I sure hope y'all can hear me. I got my air conditioning running and unfortunately I cannot turn it off. It is burning like an mf -er here in my state. It is hot as hell. And this is how it's going to be for the next few days. So, you know, I, I'm sorry if some of you are annoyed by the sound, but there is just no way I can turn it off. I went out there gardening today. By the time I came back in the house, I looked like somebody turned the hose on me. <laughs> I was drenched. Woo! Had to get back in the shower. But yeah, it, it is ooh, it is definitely burning up here. So this came out in the Washington Post, uh, July 16th, 2019. 76 billion opioid pills newly released federal data on mask the plague. See, this is the problem, ladies and gentlemen. And you know, this opioid plague has long surpassed the crack epidemic the only difference is they don't jail their people they gonna make sure no matter how bad it is their people are free in the meantime crack crackheads are still in jail y'all they're still in jail from the damn 80s because of the bill clinton three strikes you're out laws so now this addiction miraculously is a public health issue, not a crime. But when we were falling apart, every damn thing was a crime. So, you know, when you start looking at this, this is their own fault for bringing on this entire plague. You can't blame anybody else for this. You really can't. You have doctors that were extremely biased and gave people that look like them all kinds of hundreds of pills in a prescription. And then they were trying to limit us as much as possible. But, you know, hindsight 2020, I'm glad they did that. You know, we didn't need another epidemic. We didn't. So thank you. You know, this is one time when racism actually worked in our favor. We should be grateful for that. This I'm grateful for. All that other stuff y'all be talking, nah, I ain't grateful for that shit. <laughs> so let's get into this. America's largest drug company saturated the country with 76 billion oxycodone and hydrocodone pain pills from 2006 through 2012 as the nation's deadliest drug plague spun out of control according to previously um, undisclosed company data released as part of the largest civilian action in U.S. history. And that is the truth. This thing is so far gone, y'all. This is why they are all up Trump's ass to do something about it. They don't let this thing get so far out of control over the 20 years that it's been happening. They have never been able to get it under control, and they still can't now. Now, Trump is going around patting himself on the back, talking about he slowed down. <laughs> he slowed down the uh, opioid plague. No, he didn't. He didn't do anything to stop this, ladies and gentlemen. This thing is going stronger than ever. The information comes from a database maintained by the DEA that tracks the path of every single pain pill sold in the United States from manufacturers and distributors to pharmacies in every town and city. The data provides an unprecedented look at the surge of legal pain pills that fueled the prescription opioid plague which has resulted in nearly 100,000 deaths from 2006 uh, to 2012, which is a lowball number. It's way higher than that. Just six companies distributed 75% of the pills during, that, during this period. Now, that is just 
unbelievable. And these are actually well-known pharmacy chains that are across the country. McKesson Corp, Walgreens, Cardinal Health, Amerisource Bergen, CVS, and Walmart, according to an analysis of the data by the Washington Post. Three companies manufactured 88% of the opioids. Spec GX, a subsidiary of uh, Mullen Crowd, um, Activist Pharma, Par Pharmaceutical, a subsidiary of Indo Pharmaceuticals, Purdue Pharma, which the plaintiff alleged sparked the plague in the 90s with the introduction of OxyContin. And that's right. And when that first came out, ladies and gentlemen, they sold it to the public as non-addictive. And actually back then I was teaching and I had a student in my class that was on OxyContin and I didn't know a lot about it back then. I knew it was for pain and his personality was very erratic. Some days he was fine. Some days he was angry. Some days he was exhausted. I mean, he went through a lot of mood swings and I was not understanding why, you know, I was trying to be patient with him because he was in the process of getting hip replacement, but that really, it, he just had all kinds of mood swings from being on OxyContin. And I, it was very noticeable. I, I think almost everybody that was sitting in the room did notice it. You know, they noticed how, you know, we didn't know what to expect on a regular basis. I mean, that's how his mood swings were just all over the place. Now I know. Now I know. And, you know, not only addictive, it, it has many side effects too. So its version of oxycodone was ranked fourth among manufacturers with about 3% of the market. The volume of the pills handled by the company skyrocketed as the plague surged, increasing about 51% from $8.4 billion in 2006 to $12.6 billion in 2012. By contrast, doses of morphine as well as treatment for severe pain averaged slightly more than $5 million a year during the period. That is outrageous to have that amount of pills out in the public. You know what I think it is, ladies and gentlemen. I think some of these people really are in chronic pain. And I believe many of these people have scripts and they really shouldn't have scripts at all. Those 10 companies, along with about a dozen others, are now being sued in federal court in Cleveland by nearly 2,000 cities, towns, and counties alleging that they conspired to flood the nation with opioids. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's been so many states and cities and across the country that have sued all of that money that they get from the pharmaceutical company. None of it goes towards the addicts. None of it. Mm -mm. You know, they, they may pretend like it is, but really it isn't. Because you would think after all of these lawsuits, you would see a decrease in all of the drug addiction going on. But the drug addiction just keeps going up. All right. As usual, disrupted. Um, those companies, along with about a dozen others, are now being sued by the federal court in Cleveland by nearly 2,000 city, towns, and counties alleging that they conspired to flood the nation with opioids.
the companies in turn have blamed the plague on overprescribing by doctors. I, I say it's both of their faults, y'all. It's both of their faults. And pharmacies and on customers who abuse the drugs. Yeah. You know, you know, and when you really think about it, they all kind of took part in this epidemic. They really all did. You know, the, the thing that's different about this from the crack epidemic, we weren't looking for crack. That mess was dropped in the neighborhood. These folks are looking for opioids. They're going to the doctors or going out on the streets for the illegal drugs. They're looking for it. That's the big difference. Okay, the companies say they were working to supply the needs of patients with legitimate prescriptions desperate for pain relief. And as you can see, here's the list of pharmacies and how many pills they distributed um, between 2006 and 2012. And you can see they distributed in the billions, 14 billion, McKesson Corp, 12 almost 13 billion Walgreens Cardinal Health almost 11 billion Amerisource Bergen 9 billion CVS 5 billion Walgreen I'm sorry Walmart 5 billion CVS um actually more like 6 billion and Smith Drug about 1 billion a little bit 1.3 Right Aid, 1.3 billion, Kroger, 1.2, and HD Smith, 1.1 billion. That's a lot of damn pills. Okay, no matter how you look at it, that's a lot of pills for people to um, be distributing. So the database revealed what each company knew about the number of pills. It was shipping and dispensing and precisely when they were aware of those volumes year by year, town by town. In case after case, the companies allowed the drug to reach the streets of communities large and small, despite persistent red flags that those pills were being sold in apparent violation of federal law and diverted to the black market according to the lawsuits and that's still happening i mean drugs being sold on the dark web is a problem they have not been able to conquer at all so it's just showing you the parts of the country where they had the heaviest concentration of drugs and it looks far different now that's for sure so, you know, you could expect this, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of finger pointing going on. Nobody wants to take any real responsibility for the drugs they have turned out. But like I said, they all played a role as far as the blame for this plague that's going on that they sure can't break. And it continues going strong despite the fact that Trump is making the claim that um, he has slowed down the opioid plague, which is false. But sooner or later, they'll call him out on it, y'all. But please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.